Billy Eckstein was supposed to join Sarah Vaughn in the national anthem. The officials will be Jim Tunney, the referee, and uh, you see him signaling that Oakland won the pregame toss. They've elected to receive on your left. They'll be in the black. Pittsburgh will be a white. Pat Harder is the umpire. Ray Dorez is the head linesman. Art Holst is the line judge. Stan Javi's the back judge. Pat Millett is the field judge. The alternate officials today are Bob Frederick and Dave Pott. The Steelers will be spreading out. Chuck Noll brought his team now to the playoffs three years in a row. John Madden, top record the last five, eight years, along with Don Shula in pro football. Both young, gifted coaches. Roy Girella is going to kick off. We'll get the band off the field first. Harold Hart and Ron Smith are back deep. Hart, the rookie, will be nearest to you. He's number 34. Smith, the punt kickoff return specialist, is number 27. There is absolutely no breeze right now. The wind is not a factor in today's game. These two teams have met in playoffs. Oakland beating Pittsburgh handily here last year, 33-14. Pittsburgh beat Oakland in the last few seconds of Pittsburgh two years ago, 13-7. Gorilla can drive the ball deep. And it's a low kick. It's coming to Hart on the eight. He's to the 20. 25, 30. Good field position. He's driven out of bounds there by Steve Davis, number 35. And the Raiders, this is the one rule that's really helped. There's Davis. Field position for teams all year long. They're ready to operate after that opening kickoff instead of being pinned back in their own 20. Starting at left tackle will be Art Shell, number 78. Upshaw is the left guard, 63. Now this is being called back to the flag down. Double out is Jim Otto at center. He's never missed a game in the Raider history. George Beeler, the right guard, is 64. And John Bella, 75, is the right tackle. This penalty on the opening kickoff goes against the Raiders. Davis is 28. Hubbard is 44, the running back. Politnikoff is 25. Cliff Branch is 21. The tight end is Bob Moore, 88. Clipping was against Weaver. Bonnie Weaver. Davis. He's to the 27-yard line of Oakland. He's met there by Ernie Holmes. Now let's set this defense up for Pittsburgh. They're front four. Leads the National Football League in getting to the quarterback. L.C. Greenwood, 68. Joe Green, 75. Ernie Holmes is 63. Dwight White is 78. Backing them up. Outside left, Jack Ham, 59. The rookie, Lambert, who leads the team in tackles, is 58. On the right side is Andy Russell, 34. J.T. Thomas and Mel Blunt, the corners. Wagner and Edwards, the safety. Second down, six to go. Oakland from their 27. Running Davis outside going nowhere. J.T. Thomas came up and bumped into him along with 58 Jack Lambert. I think that's going to be the key, Kurt, we mentioned in the opening. If these guys can run against the Steelers, which I wouldn't call that too successful in the first, you know, in the first couple of plays, but they're, they've, they've got to try because they like to keep the ball as long as they can, but I think they're going to go to the air pretty soon. Actually, there are about 10 yards difference in passing and running for the Raiders this year. They're an evenly balanced team. Everybody thinks of them as an air circus because of Stabler. They like to establish the run. Donnie Shell comes in replacing Lambert. He's a fifth secondary back. Stabler's first pass. Big rush on him. They Joe got him. Green. Joe Green's to him, number 75. That's your first sack. And you really saw him move in there. All right, it's a little different now. They take advantage of the strength to mean Joe Green. Now, Joe is so powerful, and they're always gaming. You see a game in there, takes the man one up, one hand that literally flings <laughs> this man to the ground. He's powerful had eight tackle. successful games in a row. Made the Pro Bowl six years in a row, including his rookie year. Ray Guy, the leading punter in the National Football League with a 43 average. Glenn Edwards and Lynn Swan are deep. Both are dangerous, especially Swan. Second leading punt returner of all time. Total yardage. Oh, look at that kick. Driving Swan back, back to his 28, 30, 35, 40. And he is fumbled. He fumbled it right, and Oakland got it. Raiders ball. Raiders have it. 
15 yard return. There's your first turnover. Here's the rerun. That's Swan coming up. Let's see who grabs it from down here. There's a the ball flopping loose. It looks like Harold Hart recovered. Dalby was the one that hit him down there pretty good that first time, Kurt, number 50. All right, here's that situation where you like that bullet in the cause. Now, Kenny Stabler is not a conservative quarterback. If he runs, he goes left, but he likes to hit bullet in the cause. Dave Dalby caused the fumble with his hit. All right, Stabler puts him in a slot left formation. Run Hubbard, and Hubbard's right into number 68, L.C. Greenwood. He slowed him down, and Lambert came up. This telecast presented by the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. On that play, we were looking at the double wide set to the other side, Don. It looked like the Steelers would have had to have covered man to man. Mel Blunt, branch deep. Are they going? They're not in that same set this time, but they were in the man to man coverage. They're going to try and do that today, Al. They want to get branch one on one. There's a pass. And that's incomplete. J.T. Thomas raped all over him, but the officials say a legal play. J.T. Look at Matt saying he had him wrapped up. It looked it looked like a pretty close call. You see, Matt, he said that was pass interference, but <laughs> we mentioned Belichick again, and he is the guy they're going to. They're trying to get a first down here. He's coming back on Thomas. Let's see Thomas trying to close. Looks like me. He is bumping him there a little bit. Tracy, he's dropped a few of the easy ones, but they say if he catches that first one, he's off and running. They just made a defensive switch, Kurt. Shell has gone out. They use that five-man deep secondary. They've got Lambert back in. Now, again, there has been some success in pinching at Lambert. Banasak is in. They like the veteran when they're close to the goal line. He can get better outside than Hubbard. There's Banasak on his cut. He's to the 25-yard line, and he's stopped there by Dwight White, the right end of the Pittsburgh Steelers. A three-yard gain in second and seven. Ken Stabler against Pittsburgh last year in the playoffs hit 14 out of 17. Stabler is undoubtedly the most consistent accurate passer in football. Four touchdown passes last week against Miami to four different receivers. 20 out of 30. He is just almost unerring and he's better when he's behind. Second down seven. The Raiders are threatening. Clarence Davis rushes over the 25 to the 23 of Pittsburgh. Ernie Holmes and Andy Russell combined for the tackle. Ernie Holmes somewhat unsung, but this man is a tough defensive tackle. One-on-one -on -one there. He's being doubled, driving Otto right into the play and reaching out one hand and making the tackle. I'd say he had Otto pretty well under control that time, wouldn't you, Dero? Strong man, enormously strong. Third and five now. Oakland's ball on the Steelers 23 yard line. George Bland is standing by. He's their field goal kicker. They have a split back set up. They're holding out well. There's a pass. Oh, did he and get a yard hit? loose? That's a great play by Edwards. A legal play. Edwards going for the ball. Jarred it loose. He was momentarily open. Yeah, he timed that one just right. It was that same kind of little square end, slant end pattern that they ran a while ago to branch that he caught this time. Edwards set back time to just right and hit him, and here he comes, George Blander. And George is on, been playing football for 33 years in high school, college, and the pros. He's going to have a 40-yard attempt. The kick is up. Up. Kick is good. <laughs> on the scoreboard. Uh, he's amazing. 47-year-old George Blander puts him up. Time out, the score, Oakland three, Pittsburgh nothing. What do you want to know about money? How does compound interest work? Suppose you deposit $50 in a savings and loan and add $50 every month for 15 years. At current interest rates, you could then withdraw $50 a month every month for the rest of your life your children's lives, your grandchildren's, forever and ever, and never touch the money you deposited. Your savings and loan wants you to know how money works. One tiny spark becomes a night of blazing suspense as the world's tallest building becomes the towering inferno. Steve McQueen, Paul Newman, 
William Holden, Faye Dunaway, Fred Astaire, Susan Blakely, Richard Chamberlain, Jennifer Jones, O.J. Simpson, Robert Vaughn, and Robert Wagner. Irwin Allen's production of The Towering Inferno. See it for Christmas at a theater near you. Rated PG. George Jack the Winko is going to kick off. Ray Guy normally would do the kicking. He's been bothered by a left knee and getting leverage on his left leg, so they're just letting him punt. And he's already drilled a 56-yard punt in the game. It led to the score. Here's the kick by Jack Owenko. High, coming to Steve Davis on the five. Davis, the fastest back of the Steelers, is knocked down on his 26-yard line. Warren Bankston of the special teams, number 46, went downfield to make the tackle. One of the most important parts of the game. I think one of the things that the people out here were afraid of that Oakland might have a letdown because they thought the Super Bowl game was last week against Miami. So far on the special teams, you can't see anything like that. Well, they look all fired up. And of course, so are the Steelers. Terry Bradshaw sets it down. Gives the ball off to Franco Harris, who really sure put it his way that time. That's the way you like to see a fullback pick his way through fallen bodies. That's good footwork. Absolutely right. Franco, who just had his second thousand yard season in the last three years and averaged 98 yards a game his last eight games. And you know, that might be the difference between Franco and Hubbard. Franco has that ability to hit the hole. The hole is closed up. He sees another and moves to it. He's a bit bigger than Hubbard also. Second down and a long two to go. The Steelers, the leading rushing team in the American Conference, open with number two. Here's Rocky Blyer turning that corner and he's short of a first down. Jack Tatum. Gerald Irons. Irons turned it in. One of the complaints of the, you just thought that they're the leading rushing team, but one of the complaints they have is who else can carry it besides Franco? And Rocky Blyers become the starter this year. He does not have the breakaway speed. A lot of runners you'd see right here when they turn that corner going to go pick up that extra couple of yards. That was good pursuit all the way across. That's Tatum coming up there to put the clinch and tackle on him. Oakland goes into a three-man line. Monty Johnson is the fourth linebacker. Bubba Smith's out. Linebackers are standing up at the end of the line. They're not the down men. Bradshaw to pass. Deep. It goes. He hits. It's no good. He had his man right in the numbers. And then he dropped the ball when Skip Thomas jarred it loose. Thomas thought he should have swiped that ball. I'll tell you, that was almost a completion and a fumble. And then a fumble recovery. Can't ball Bradshaw for that one. The ball was right there on the money. All right, Pittsburgh will go into punt formation. Veteran Bobby Walden has not had a punt block this year. Chuck Noll talking to Bradshaw. Ron Smith, both these teams have excellent punt return men, and Smith and Swan. Smith averaged 11 and a half yards of punt return this year. Swan 14. Low pass. He gets it away. A short one. He'll have to let it hit and hope for the bounce, and he gets the bounce. Rolling inside the Raider 25 to the Raider 21-yard line where Oakland will take over. For the first down. Just a comment again. We talk about, obviously, this great defensive front, and there may not be a better one in all of football. We have a timeout. Play a resume. Oakland will have the ball in their 21 with a score of 3 nothing. Oakland. Those ledges in the middle of the bluff are outcroppings of oil shale. They give you an idea of how the beds of oil shale are structured underground here in western Colorado. Amico bid $105 million for half interest in the oil shale on 5,000 acres of this land. Here are some typical oil shale rocks with layers of solid locked in oil. There's so much of it in these rocks, they'll actually burn. To get the oil out and do it in a way that respects the environment is going to take a lot of time and money, as much as $2 billion total investment just for Amico's share of the facilities to develop this lease. But this new source of oil can add billions of barrels to our nation's reserves, and no foreign power can ever turn this oil off. A deputy police commissioner puts his job on the line when he helps a friend cover up a murder on Colombo. Tonight at 8.30, 7.30 Central Time on NBC. 
There's the final of the National Football Conference game. The Minnesota Vikings will be in the Super Bowl playing the winner of this game. You'll see it on NBC January 12th. Congratulations to Bud Grant and his Vikings. Two years in a row for them. Play action pass. Savers toss. Intercepted. No drop. JT Thomas. No black shirt anywhere. Yeah, I don't know what that one was. I think it surprised Thomas. I think Thomas was so surprised. Let's look at it again. Stavers are pretty easy to wear. He's got a pretty good rush. That was home as you saw 63 coming in there. And I didn't see anybody. Maybe it was Blitnikoff if he's trying to get coming back across the middle. I really couldn't tell. Stavers one out of four now. Second and ten for the Raiders on their own 21. We have 8.20 to go in the first period. The Raiders are ahead 3-0 on a bland of field goal. Marv Hubbard is crunched down. And right now the Raiders are not moving against that Steeler front four and linebackers of L.C. Greenwood and Jack Lambert. Well, you know, the balance of this defense really is so interesting. You've got the capacity for the big rush from that front four, and then you've got the speed and the mobility of the linebackers. Now, ordinarily, a quarterback might think about a screen or a possible draw. It's tough with these linebackers. And Lambert goes out, the linebacker, and, and uh, coming in now is Donnie Shell, the rookie of South Carolina State, as a fifth secondary back. Third down and ten to go for the Raiders. And he was rushed hard. Oh, nearly reaching that ball is Donnie Shell. Another hard rush. You know, you could count the sacks of the Steelers, 52 for this year, but you don't count also the number of times they rush and hurry the passer, so he has to make a bad That's throw. That's really a good point, Kurt, because, you know, when you get that quarterback thinking about a rush, he, all he's got to do is just be off just a little bit, man, because there's the timing, and those guys, the defensive guys have got good moves, too. All right, that's Glenn Edwards and Lynn Swan. Last time they handled a punt, they fumbled it over to the Raiders. Ray Guy drove a punt 56 yards. His first time. Doesn't hit this one as good. Edwards will take it on his 38, 40, 45, 50. Spins in Oakland territory, and he's met head on there on the Oakland 48-yard line. The man that tackles him is Ron Smith, number 27. 40-yard punt. 14-yard return, and now the Steelers are ready to go. January 12th, NBC Super Sunday will begin at 1.30 Eastern time with a review of the season, a special one-hour program entitled NFL 74, The Championship Chase. Then at 2.30, a pregame show featuring Don Meredith, oh, yeah. Joe Namath, and Cast, and we'll have the game on at 3 o'clock Eastern time on NBC. January 12th. Super Sunday. Oh. Michael Harris is upended by number 80, Art Tom, the right tackle of Syracuse. Well, we talk about Joe Green a lot and uh, Ernie Holmes. The Raiders have a couple of pretty fair tackles themselves in Sistrunk and Tom. You're right. Toms can play off that center when they're in an odd formation as well as anybody. And he really has come on. He is fired up. And he seems like he's always fired up. <laughs> Second down, 10. Big Bubba's coming out of here for a while. Tony Klein's gone in now. He had a knee operation after the Buffalo game, the opening game of the season, has made a remarkable recovery. He's a very quick penetrator, Tony Klein. A lot more speed up front. And they run into a bunch of Raiders at the 46-yard line, led by Dan Connors, the veteran middle linebacker, and Horace Jones, 82, the right end. Al was talking about the Pittsburgh linebackers, but Connors, number 55, is he really does the yeoman duty here for that Oakland defense. You see, the main thing this guy is doing, he's stopping it all up in there. So they get, there's no place for Franco to go. There's no hole for him to run in. Gives him time for his other guys to come in on the outside. Connors has got a big job there in the middle today. Jimmy Warren comes on the field, and Connors goes out. Now the Raiders have five deep backs. Third down, eight to go. Pittsburgh on the Oakland, 46. Bradshaw's trying to audible. You can see him trying to get that sound. I don't believe they all got it either. Going to run it. This is where he could hurt you. First down. He averaged 10 yards a carry against Buffalo last week. He not only uh, is nimble, but he is so got, strong. Got a little fight going down here. It, this is going to be one of the, you know, I, I really think it was an audible. And I, I feel it was a, like what you call one of your old busted plays because I don't think there was that much action in the backfield. It's a bootleg. He did give some sort of fake to Franco. At least Franco went in the right direction. I don't think he had any idea of throwing the ball. Do you, Al? Looks no like there's a run all the way. He was just trying to get out of bounds. And uh, 
and you know the interesting thing is, and they're making the substitution, they went the Klein spot. Now Klein in that three-man rush must take an outside rush. He's got to be looking for that that move of, of Terry Bradshaw's. I just wonder if when Klein comes in that that might be one of his audibles because Bubba does usually play upfield a lot. Bubba's down in the lineup now, the down man, number 77. First and 10 for the Steelers. The only man that's really run the ball today for the Steelers so far has been Terry Bradshaw. Villapiano makes the hit that time on Franco Harris. You know, there's been a lot of interesting discussion about these 13 and 14 men defensive huddles by the Vikings, the Raiders here last week against uh, the Dolphins, and we talked to Art McNally, the supervisor officials. They can put those 13 or 14 men out there, but if they go in the game, they have to stay for one play, and three or two men or whatever it is, one, have to come off the field. The new men have to stay in, unless there's a mistake and they're allowed one mistake a game. Harris outside. Running for a first down, Franco Harris. That was again Tony Klein back in at the defensive end. Bubba just came out that time. Again, it was a quick pitch around that end. We may we may have found something there awful early. I don't know. That was a quick pitch to Franco. You know, I was talking to John Madden. I asked him about uh, Tony Klein's legs, and he said, well, you know, he did miss the entire season. He can't be in the kind of shape you'd like him to be in. That is a very effective play when you've got that three-man rush, you've got to get that linebacker, get outside the end quickly, and you've got to be. Now, uh, I guess his knee touched about a yard short. It's third and short yardage, double tight end. We're in the game now. They have the first down. That's good, tough running. That really is. Franco Harris picks it up with Dan Connors driving him to the turf on the Oakland 24-yard line. The score is 3-0. Oakland leading 40-yard field goal by George Blanda after the Raiders recovered a punt fumble. That came with 10-14 to go in the first period. Franco now has carried the ball six times for 24 yards. You saw Franco talking to the official there. There's definitely no love lost between these two teams. And Franco said before the game that the last time they played out here that he didn't call any names that they were throwing dirt in his face and everything else. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. But at least Pittsburgh remembers that. And they're out here with vengeance. This is not a game, this is a crusade. <laughs> we remember, boys, it's just a game. First down and Bradshaw backpedals. He fires and it is incomplete to Frank Lewis. A low pass to him. A very difficult uh, it was impressed. catch it would have been for Lewis. That low pass was the hardest for a receiver. Impressed with the amount of time Bradshaw had to throw, which is a real key thing. You know, Frank, Frank led the Steelers this year in pass receiving with 30 catches. When Terry does make up his mind to throw, he's taken a very deep drop. Now, Terry also has an ability to make that quick drop and will pull it down. I'm sure Chuck Noll gets nervous when his quarterback decides to run up the middle. Second down, 10. Pittsburgh on the Oakland 24. Oakland ahead, 3-0. 3.40 to go in the first three. Bradshaw has attempted two passes. No completion. Rocky Blyer. And they're picking up some ground outside, right and left on the Raiders. Flyers hit there by uh, Gerald Irons and Dan Connors, the two linebackers, also Horace Jones. They'll spot him down on the 18-yard line. It'll be third and four. Here's Horace Jones. Now, that's John Cobb moving to the outside. They're going to try to beat him. That's Horace Jones by himself. Frank Lewis will be driving back down, but Horace, good mobility, makes the tackle. Still picked up some yards. That was Clack, incidentally, that was also trying to block out on Jones just to slow him down. There's no way you're going to block him, but if you can just slow him down, that helps. Eight plays so far in this Pittsburgh drive. Grinding it out on the ground. Their big games have come outside by Bradshaw and Harris. Third down and four for the Steelers. Bradshaw with the field spread out in front of him. Flares at the Blyer. 15. Blyer first down as he drives to the nine-yard line. He dumped it off to his safety belt man very cleverly. And now the Steelers have quite a drive going for themselves. Boy, they sure have. And the big thing that I think is different in this Steeler drive and what we've seen over the last few weeks is the poise and the confidence of Terry Bradshaw. He's staying in there very confidently. Well, the Steelers all say they've never seen him as relaxed and confident. Bradshaw says, I'm not going to worry anymore about the booze and getting blamed. He really had a heck of a rookie year. Yeah, he came really in as a highly talented rookie. And <laughs> this is a first and goal. And stopped at the eight-yard line as Franco Harris upended by Horace Jones to right end. Second down, eight to go for a Steeler touchdown. 
And let's see this drive now is 10 plays. Coaches like a drive of at least 12 plays to run that clock. There, they've got one going now. They started this drive on the 48-yard line. Just grinding it out. There are a minute 40 seconds to go in the first period. Oakland's ahead 3-0. They're being threatened right now. Their lead is a slot right. Lewis in the slot. Shanks on outside him. Second and eight. Or touchdown. Out it goes. Incomplete at the goal line. Intended for Frank Lewis. And broken up there by Namaya Wilson. Wilson might have been a little suspect today. Warfield turned him around a few times last week. And the Raiders thought that they might be trying to pick on him, but he made a good play there. <laughs> I saw him out last night, and he said, Dan did down, I'm going to tell you something, baby. They're not going to beat me today. I'm going to be on him like a rug. And he was that time. He was close to him. Willie Brown was in the hospital last week. They're all pro cornerback. He's had a knee problem, hasn't played for six or eight weeks. He's available today, but I don't know what he's going to be. And Bubba Smith comes out of the lineup. And Tony Klein replaces him to get a better pass rush. Let's see if they try to get outside Tony again. This is a third and eight for a Pittsburgh touchdown. He gets away. Uh-oh. He'll take off. Yeah. And he stopped. He can move, can he, for a he... big man? Was that Nehemiah that tackled him? Who, I, I didn't see who made the tackle over there. Skip that Thomas. Was, Skip Thomas. Skip. Now, that was a good open field tackle because Bradshaw is a good runner. Now, they, they blitzed from the outside. Had a three-man rush. You see him duck under right there. Was that Tony Klein? Tony Klein. Don, let me ask you something. One thing that they were warning their pass rushers, don't leave your feet today. Contain him. That's right. Don't let him fake you out by jumping up in the air and blocking his pass. And that time, they went up in the air and he went right around them. Girillo now will try it up. He'll try and tie it. This will be a 20-yard field goal attempt. He's deadly inside. He's hit eight out of nine this year inside the 30. The crowd's not helping him. It's up, and the kick is... He missed it. No good! Oh, no! No good! <laughs> That's awful. They were sticking right up there for him, and he missed it. He had a low trajectory. So the Steelers blow the field goal. Timeout with a score, Oakland three and Pittsburgh nothing. For 50 years, the name Chrysler has stood for an automobile of very special accomplishment and luxury. Accomplishment that today is reflected in the 1975 Chrysler New Yorker Brougham. Luxury, symbolized by the proud bearing of the 1975 Imperial Le Baron. An automobile that sets its own distinctive standards of elegance, comfort, and convenience. And now, that tradition of excellence graces a new Chrysler. Cordoba. Cordoba is an automobile of beauty and harmony. Small, but so very luxurious, and yet so very affordable. The Chrysler's, now excellence in three sizes. Let's take a look at this field goal. It looks like he just hooked it. It's a low trajectory shot, 20 yard attempt. If anybody had tipped it, it's over here to the left, but I don't think he would have made it anyway, because you're right, Kurt, it looks awful low and it's hooking off real quick. All right, first down for the Oakland Raiders in their 20. They're on top, 3-0, late in the first period. Minnesota beat the Rams today, 14-10, to to go to the Super Bowl. Clarence Davis and the Raiders aren't moving much on the ground right now. That's Jack Lambert coming up, Andy Russell on the outside to stop him on the uh, 23, a gain of three, second and seven for Oakland. All right, now the difference so far is obvious. The offensive line of the Steelers are moving them out. The offensive line of Oakland one of their main strengths has not been. But the other thing, Oakland is notorious for running left, and the Steelers know that, and they're playing them left. Stabler puts his team in a slot right with Branch in a slot. And they run Davis, and he's hit by Lambert again, the rookie of Penn State, or Kent State, who led the team in tackles with 119. They just had a phenomenal season. That's very difficult to move into that middle linebacking spot 
as a, a youngster and diagnosed plays. Jeff Seaman did it with a Vikings zone. Well, you know, now, now you've got the situation where that front four is going to be blowing. They've got five men in the secondary now with Shell coming in. The front four is going to fire. They put Lauren Taves into the game now, an extra linebacker. And I'll tell you, gentlemen, uh, if Oakland, uh, there's the gun. Oakland doesn't get their running game going, their passing game could be in trouble. That's the end of the first period. Oakland three, Pittsburgh nothing. I've been building bridges most of my life, but none like this. What we're doing, we're using these two cableways to move 90 ton pieces of steel some 2,000 feet across this beautiful gorge. That's the kind of job we take on at U.S. Steel's American Bridge Division. When we're finished, West Virginia has the longest steel arch band in the world. That's productivity. At U.S. Steel, we're involved. Ever wonder what happens to the money you keep in your checking and savings accounts? Let me show you. Some of it's here in town. Put to work helping people change things for the better. Like buying a new car. Or starting a new business. Your money's working. Yet all the while, it's there when you need it. In a safe, convenient place. America's bankers. Helping you change things for the better. That deflected pass in the last minute of the game put Pittsburgh in the playoffs for the first time in 40 years. That was a great moment for me. I'd like to introduce you to another great moment. This is Mildred Morrison graduating from Chatham College. She never would have made it without the help and training she received at United Way supported YWCA. There are a lot of great moments in life, and you can share in them when you support your local United Way. The United Way, thanks to you, it's working. Just retaping uh, Skip Thomas's uh, ankle, I understand. Third and six. And it's knocked down, and Staber's having trouble now getting rid of the ball. There's a flag down also on the play. That's the sixth pass for Stabler and just one completion. That isn't the Ken Stabler. Well, I'll tell you, that's not that ordinary defensive front four that he's no. facing today, too. I, I don't think it's by accident that uh, when Chuck Noll came to Pittsburgh, his First time at the, <clears throat> at the drafting table, he picked number 75 from North Texas State, Joe Green, who he said, along with O.J. Simpson, was the surest blue chip player in the country that year. And Joe Green really has been the guy that, to me, has brought all this stuff together for, for Pittsburgh. He's been the catalyst there in the middle and was responsible for that big rush that time. All right, Ray Guy in punt formation. has averaged 48 yards a kick with two punts. Swan and Edwards are deep. Guy gets a towering spiral away. Taken by Swan and he's 32. The USC rookies at the 35. And he's driven out of bounds. Flag. Flag is down. Flag is down downfield. It was Warren Banks in 46 to make the tackle. Maybe the second hit out of bounds. I think that was on flag. 44 yard punt, the five yard return. Monty Johnson was the second man that went out of bounds and dived on Swan. And this penalty is going. Let's see what they're going to do. There's an ineligible man downfield on the punt. And also a personal foul. Both of them were against Oakland. And let's see how that one does work. Now the, the penalty would be Five yards, is that what it is for the uh, now the lineman leave too early? Right. Somebody left in the interior line before the ball was made. And then the unnecessary roughness penalty. Let's see. There you go. Boy, I'm glad you're here, Al. I know you can figure all that out. You read books and stuff, don't you? Not too often. Boy, and you're funny <laughs> off the air, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Donald. He is funny off the yeah, air. Isn't he? Isn't he clever? <laughs> I've been reading about both of you two guys, and so we better drop it. <laughs> All right, Pittsburgh's back in Oakland territory. They'll be on the Oakland 49 with a first down. They call Johnson for getting on top of Swan out of bounds. Now the two rookie receivers are in, and they're burners. Stallworth 82 for the Steelers and Swan 88. Swan was a spark for the Steelers last week in the second quarter against Buffalo. Three to nothing, Oakland ahead. Very early in the second period. Rocky Blyer 
running straight ahead to the 46. Well, you all know, you've been told many times, he missed the entire 69 season. The only NFL player that went to Vietnam and then he came out much decorated. He uh, is supposed to be a plugger, but actually running straight ahead, he has better speed than you think. You know, I just saw an absolutely perfect trap. John Cobb, we talked about him in the past, number 55. He came from the outside and trapped on Toms, and Art will remember that for a while. Great block. Second down, seven to go, Pittsburgh on the Raider 46. Out it goes to Stallworth. And the rookie of Alabama A&M, who had a sensational preseason schedule, is dropped at the 43 of Oakland. That was Cobb that you saw the head go out. Horace and Jones played that one well. Well, the uh, Steelers are certainly deep in wide receivers. Shanklin's had a subpar year. He's been nagged with injury. The Swan behind him. And you have Frank Lewis on the left with Stallworth behind him. They're well set for the next few years. We saw a pass, Don. I know you threw many times to Bob Hayes. That Absolutely. Quick screen, right? Yep. All you're trying to do is get that thing out there in the flat to you. Guys got some speed, got a chance of breaking it all the way. You Frank get a guy Lewis. like Cobb out in front of you. Frank Lewis now at the top of your screen, replacing Stallworth. Swans to the right, third down, four. Bradshaw shoots it, completes yeah. it, that's right on target. Perfect pass to the tight end, Larry Brown, number 87. Couldn't have been a better pass. He had to pinpoint that one. It was a good pattern, too. He had to. Uh, this zone flooded over here. He's also getting great protection again. I'm telling you, he's got some time to throw back there. This guy can throw. He was the number one draft pick the second year that uh, Chuck had the team, but he just took his time and hit him coming right across the middle. Bradshaw's out past Faber so far in the game. He's three out of six. Faber's one out of six. Bradshaw's getting more time. They haven't touched him. Franco Harris on a sweep. 25. And he's upended there by Jack Tatum, probably the hardest hitting deep secondary man pro football back. Woody Hayes told us down in Pasadena the other day, the hardest hitter he's ever coached at Ohio State. And Jarrillo this time will try a 23-yard attempt. He missed the 20-yarder earlier. And that kick is up, and it is good. We've got a tie game. They tie the game with 9.34 to go in the first half. The score is Pittsburgh 3 and Oakland 3. The IBM Copier 2. It's a copier that works. It's a copier that works well on a lot of things. It's a copier that puts a ceiling on your copier costs and helps you manage them. All in all, it's quite a copier. secondary recovery techniques we're going to produce more oil now than we did the first time what we're doing here is water flooding on this particular well we're converting it to a water injection well we inject water into the four corner wells push the oil into the center well and pump it out you know the time and money we spend on secondary recovery methods means more dependence on our country for oil and less on others well, twice Pittsburgh's been inside the Oakland 10. They've had to settle for one field goal. Oakland's been moved on rather handily by the Steelers, but they've sort of had an elastic band defense. The Steelers have outplayed the Raiders so far in this game. They've tied it now and will kick off. Back deeper, Ron Smith and Harold Hart. Gorilla's kick, a high one. And it's coming to Smith on the six-yard line. He's out to the 20. Finds a hole and is cracked down on his own 31-yard line. And he's hit there by Donnie Schell, number 31, whose hero, by the way, is on the other team, Jack Tatum. Not a bad hero. Here he is again, Donnie Schell, 31. He's the man that you see when they go in their nickel defense. 
And this is a pretty good pop because if he gets by this man, it could have been a long, long run. It was pretty well set up. It really was. Yep. Right off away. a good block there. That was Banizak. That was blocking on that was First good. down, Oakland's ball on her own 30 yard line. Marv Hubbard. Try as they might, the Raiders could in no way run through the steel curtain and were to end the half with a paltry 18 yards rushing. But because they kept trying to run, they had to keep giving up the ball. With Pittsburgh moving again, Bradshaw just barely misconnected on a big gain to Lynn Swan. Another flat pass to Blyer again had the Oakland defense creaking like the hull of a submarine down in the deepest deep. Everything Bradshaw tried seemed to work, and even the old college option was good for eight. Bradshaw's mixed bag of play calling was working well, and again he went up top and narrowly averted disaster in the form of a Phil Villapiano interception. But the blonde and balding bomber continued undaunted, throwing into the teeth of madness. A perfect spinner to Larry Brown gave the Steelers a first and goal at the Oakland 8. The time had come to disprove an axiom and to break through the Raider defense. And then came one of those plays that makes an official's life a real misery. Bradshaw's pass to John Stallworth looked to be a touchdown, but Stallworth was ruled out of bounds. From another angle, the question seems to be one of interference by number 48, Namaya Wilson. Again, a borderline judgment decision. And from yet another angle, the catch looks to be made in bounds. Definitely a tough play to call, an official's nightmare, and a big Steeler disappointment. Now faced with a third and goal situation, Terry and his brash bunch were faced also with a dilemma. They had picked up ten first downs to Oakland's two in the first half, but on the board it was 3-3. A score was needed here for morale reasons more than anything else. Unbelievably, the silver and black had done it again. Bradshaw's pass was picked off by Namaya Wilson, and the Steelers had come up empty. On three forays inside the Raider 10-yard line, Pittsburgh had managed a fiddling three points. A replay of the interception in slow motion shows that Bradshaw's intended receiver had fallen down in the far right-hand lower portion of your screen. The Myers return put the ball on the Oakland 35, but a block or two, and he could have gone all the way. <laughs> Nevertheless, Raider fans were more than pleased by yet another narrow escape from the Pittsburgh touchdown threat. Now it was time to beat the clock and Stabler took to the air. A 27-yard completion to Fred Boletnikoff moved Oakland to the Steeler, 23. Then a strike to wide open Cliff Branch had the Raiders on Pittsburgh's one-yard line. But a tripping penalty nullified the play and George Blandis' 38-yard field goal was blocked by Jack Lambert. You'll hear more about him later. The last play of the first half was symbolic of the Steelers' offensive performance thus far in the game as Bradshaw scrambled brilliantly, covered a lot of ground, ended up with only a 14-yard loss to show for it. And while the Steelers must have been down because of their inability to put it in the end zone, neither were the Raiders too happy about their lost scoring opportunity, their inability to run against the Steel Curtain, 
But above all, they had to wonder how many times could the defense bend so far without snapping in two. And when was the feared and formidable big play offense going to come out of the closet and make the big play? We have 15 pro bowlers here today. Nine Raiders made the pro bowl game. Belitnikoff, Branch, Guy, Shell, Sistrunk, Stabler, Tatum, Upshaw, Villapiano, Stabler will be the starting quarterback receiving the most votes. Six Steelers were selected by the NFL coaches. Jarella, Green, Greenwood, Ham, Harris, and Andy Russell. So 15 All-Stars in this game today. The Oakland Raiders will kick off. Jack Owenko will do the booting. Davis takes it on the nine after Pearson had called for it. Davis is tripped up as he reached his 30-yard line. Once again, is that Bob Hudson down there and Warren Banks? Did. I'll tell you, you know why he's the captain of this team. Now, he gets hit. He gets popped. We saw him do this before. He'll get right up and drive right at the man with the ball. There's the first hit. Never really taking his eye off the runner. Steelers, Lynn Swan to the right. Frank Lewis left. Rocky Blyer and Frank O'Harris have gone all the way as running backs. Blyer squirting through. Good yardage. The fumble. Raider ball. That's the way and the first half started. Is Jack Tatum, number 32. Well, they're coming out to put a trap on Bubba. They go inside a bubble, but he can't quite close it. Someone's closed off Connors in the middle. Bill Piano makes a hit. That, that, gets in, that really knocks it loose, and Tatum is right there on top of it. And the Raiders get a big break. That's the third turnover against Pittsburgh. The Raiders have not given up the ball today. They had only one turnover against Miami. They run Hubbard, and Hubbard has stopped. His forward motion stop at the 36-yard line of Pittsburgh. Miami also, uh, last Saturday, a week ago Saturday, did not have a turnover until the last 30 seconds of the game. Incidentally, we'd like to pass the note to Don Shula and the Dolphins and a tribute to their magnificent performance here. And they all went over to the Oakland dressing room and as John Madden said, it's a really class bunch. You know why they were the Super Bowl champs for the character they have on their team. Saber puts it up and is batted away from Charlie Davis by Andy Russell, number 34, who's never missed a game. A streak of 140 games going now with the Steelers. Now, here's the fellow that amazes me. I, I like to watch Fred Boletnikoff when he's not the primary receiver because he's always really making the move. J.T. Thomas, Florida State. Boletnikoff, Florida State. We're going to see a different perimeter now of, in that Steelers secondary, but don't Blue side of this man, number 25. Donnie Shell came in, replacing the linebacker Lambert. Five secondary backs. Third and seven. There's a quick one. Wide open is Cliff Branch. They got him isolated out there for a first down. Oh, yeah, Cliff huh? Branch led the American Conference in pass receiving. He scored more touchdowns this year than any other wide receiver. Well, it, Branch just runs an outside route. Nothing more. They had a deep guy in the slot. Took him down deep, but that ball was thrown really well. Now Greenwood almost gets back in there. He's on Bella. He's coming back in. Almost falls. Gets back there just about time. A little bit late. Good throw. Good catch. Anna Sachs in the game now. Replacing Hubbard. First down open on the Pittsburgh 24. Cutting through is Vanasak. Vanasak is a veteran who can smell that goal line. Also, he can pick holes outside a little better. And they think it gives them more flexibility down in scoring territory. A gain of two yards at second and eight. Oakland on the Pittsburgh 22, a tie game, three all. We just started the second half. By the way, when we talk about the fact they run left, Kurt, we all know it's Art Shell on that left side and Gene Upshaw. Good reason to run there. They have Branch in the slot on the right. Davis. He's got one open. Look out! Oh, it's intercepted. Yeah. Good. Intercepted. Boy, what a good Jack defense. Jack Ham's got play. it, and Jack Ham 
intercepted five passes this year. He and Bill Berge tied for the lead in linebacking receptions. He very alertly came up with that one. Good defensive play. He's an opportunist. All right, timeout with a score. Oakland three and Pittsburgh three. I used to shave like a barbarian, hacking and cutting my face. Then Chick introduced the civilized shave. Super 2, the twin blade cartridge with Teflon coating. Now I can shave clothes, but say, even with a track 2 handle, Teflon coats the edge of each Super 2 blade. For a close, safe, civilized shave, try a Chic Super 2 cartridge. Because what are we, barbarians? If all the people in the world only drank rosé wine, then all the wine they'd need would be Lance's rosé. But sometimes people prefer white. So we have Lancer's Vigno Bronco. And at times only a red will do. So now there's Lancer's Rubio, a full-bodied ruby red wine. Rosé, white, and Rubio. Lancer's, all the wine the world needs. A deputy police commissioner puts his job on the line when he helps a friend cover up a murder on Colombo. Tonight at 8.30, 7.30 Central Time on NBC. With the cap and glasses of 74-year-old Art Rooney in his 42nd year of ownership of the Steelers, finally his team has made it big the last three years after years of losing. What a beautiful man. He is that. First down. Bradshaw feeds the ball off to Harris. And they're moving. Frankel's out to the 32. The acceleration of the big man. Zonka we saw last week, number 32 this week. He is the complete runner. Six. Beautiful hole. Right to the safety. 61 yards for him. He's a leading ball carrier. Tony Klein has replaced Bubba Smith at left end for the Raiders, number 84. Second down, a yard to go for Pittsburgh. Harris, first down. It was tumbled down on the 35-yard line of Pittsburgh by Gerald Irons. But it's another Steeler first down. They now have 11 to 3 for Oakland. This game tied 3 to 3, 12-25 to play in the third period. George Atkinson, number 43, obviously in the strong safety position, looking for run. When you see number 43 at the line of scrimmage in the early down, he's looking for the run. Bubba Smith went back in and left in. Another feed to Blair. Nearly uh, had his head thrown off. And the ball. What do they call it? Uh-oh. That's Villafiano, but I think the whistle had already blown the ball dead on the 42-yard line of Pittsburgh. You want to know how many footballs they have here today? This game is in charge of the league office. A dozen balls here today is available. 55, Dan Connors, he played at the University of Miami, involved in it. Now, you know, we've often said, Kurt, you don't beat a team if they can run against you. How, well, can, how can that not be a fumble, by the way? I'll excuse me. The gain of seven is second and three. Home fans not very happy. Harris again breaks this one, and he nearly went that time, and Jack Tatum... Made a rolling block tackle on him, or he might have really sprinted into that far corner and gone all the way. A first down for the Steelers, who continue to dominate the line of scrimmage. Dominated totally, Kurt, and now they've got them so conscious, we just might see Terry try to exploit the secondary, playing it tight with 88, Lynn Swan. Swan to the right, Lewis left. Michael Harris keeps going. He'll have 100 yards in this third quarter. He ran into his own blocker that time. Slowed down by his own blocker, Breyer, and then Bubba Smith and Phil Villapiano. Yeah, they couldn't get Bubba down that time. Bubba kept down. No. Good lateral movement. They lost two yards at second and 12 for the Steelers on the Raider 49. Three to three game. 10-30 to go in the third period. Coming in now is Jimmy Warren. Lynn Coming Swan. out is Jim Connors, the middle linebacker. They'll have five deep backs in. Lynn Swan just said something to Terry Bradshaw. A 
Back, back there in the left. Terry, I'm number 88. Yeah, I'm open. Rocky Blair. Oh, he's been running well. <laughs> that to was the 39 yard line. And that quick pitch has been very effective yes, for him. Bill Piano nailed him. But it picked up good yardage. All right, now maybe what he said when I was talking about Lynn Swan is that I can get that man to the inside. You will not see the block, but the quick pitch breaks because Swan is coming back and making a good block. Warren missed him right there. Number 20 came up. That was a good move by Blyer. I don't know how he did that. The old whip leg trick. You remember that one, don't you? Oh, very well. Yeah. I still use it. The old whip leg. <laughs> Matter of fact. Third down and two to go. <laughs> oh. Frankie Harris has 73 yards rushing. Rocky Blyer, 57. 130 for Pittsburgh. He's going to try and pass for it on third down. The pass, no good. Wide of Frank Lewis, who's trying to come back for the ball. And Demaya Wilson has been excellent today in the secondary. And now coming on will probably be Bobby Walden to do the punting on fourth and two. Both these defenses, when they've had to have it, have had it. I was waiting for a comment by Meredith, but right now he is deep in a big hunk of fried chicken. Don't tell anybody that, but I didn't have lunch. Fried chicken is good. One punt today for Bobby Walden for 46 yards. Ron Smith is back deep. Let's see how he aims it for the far coffin corner, and that kick is into the end zone for the touchback. Oakland ball, first down in the Oakland 20. will take over and our score now you know a few years ago we pumped these wells about as dry as West Texas itself with the new secondary recovery techniques we have we're going to produce more oil now than we did the first time. What we're doing here is water flooding. On this particular well, we're converting it to a water injection well. It's part of a basic five-spot pattern, just like spots on a domino. We inject water into the four corner wells, push the oil into the center well, and then we pump it out. As a result of water flooding, this old field now produces over 200,000 barrels of oil a day. You know, the time and money Amico spends on recovery methods means we can depend more on our country and less on other countries. And that's good for everybody. Look how dominant Pittsburgh's been with their rushing. I don't know that bench is one of the reasons. That's right, Franco Harris. He has over 70 yards. Marv Hubbard has been held for just seven yards today on the ground. One of his lowest totals ever. That's up Pittsburgh's been. But the Raiders have stopped them when they've had to. First down Oakland. Again, only a yard. They just can't get a running game going. Second down nine. Ernie Holmes, Elsie Greenwood in on that play. There's Ernie Holmes again. Moving across the line, keeping that excellent defensive position and moving to the ball. Basic fundamental football. Second down. Almost 10 to go. Like Oakland's going to have to throw to move against the Steelers. They give the ball to Hubbard. Look out. Down he goes. They can't get outside. They can't move inside. Fumble. But it's still Oakland's ball. Wednesday afternoon, starting at 4.30 Eastern time, our holiday bowl coverage begins with the Rose Bowl. Ohio State and USC. You'll see superstars. Archie Griffin and Anthony Davis, the number one and two men in America, and the voting for the outstanding college player of the year. NBC Sports, number one in live coverage of major sports events all year round. Going out is the linebacker Lambert coming in as a reserve back shell on third down and eight. Staver out of the pocket throws, and he is hit. And where did they hit him? They hit him on the 31 for a first down. Politnikov. And it'll be a first down for Oakland. Made some loud moves. If that thing wasn't over the 30, let's take a look at it. But let's look going back again. He had good time. Yep. 
no doubt. Yeah. Let's take a look at this now. Joe Green moving to the outside. Now, this is the way they like that rush. Joe goes out. A loop to the inside by L.C. Greenwood. However, he was cut off. That's Beeler out there with him. And then you saw that Kenny did step up in the pocket and whip that thing out to Malenikov. Clarence Davis has replaced, been replaced by Charlie Smith. Davis pass. Wow. Wide oh. open is Frank. Frank. We can run the 100 and 9-2. It's brought down by Jack Ham. They got Frank isolated on the linebacker. That's, That's what they've been to trying do. to do all day. They were able to do that one. It looks like some sort of a, well, a play action sort of deal. Again, good protection, though. You see Otto coming back to pick him up. He's not really on that linebacker so no. much. He just had blunt so deep that he had to come back in and uh, could get any help from that linebacker. He's in between blunt and ham. That's three passes. Branches back. The look at Bob is back, too. Quick count again. Stabler unloads it deep to Brad. Deep, deep. Oh! Off his fingertip. <laughs> that was six points. Well, Blount thought he was going to intercept that one. He was going to try to play the ball for the interception. And he just kept going and kept going. Went right over his head. Just went he just, went right out of his hands and right out again. He just runs by the deep zone. Let's take a look at it. Made a move to the inside. Blunt's running with him. You see him stop to go up to the interception. Kind of blocked the vision of Branch there. You can't be too critical. It would have been a difficult catch, but definitely a catchable ball. They take Branch out and put Frank Fitz in to give Branch a breather. Second down, 10. Open on the 50-yard line. The game tied, 3-3. Three to three. 6.30 to go in the third period. And they run Manasak that time into Pittsburgh territory to the Pittsburgh 48 or 49. A couple of yards is all. Just can't nudge him out of there on the ground. No, they can't. And also, the thing that we're noticing is that the receivers will, are Bolitnikov branch. Occasionally, he'll go to Moore, but he doesn't have, or he has not at least thrown to those backs out of the backfield. No, they uh, they got branch back in there. And every now and then, Don, if you throw to branch, even though it's incomplete, you've got that defense yeah, worrying. Keeps them loose. Uh, one of you guys mentioned, too, the reason why they're not throwing, they've got those good linebackers on the outside. Russell, Ham. Donnie Shell's in the secondary. Here's time. He hits Malitnikov for a first down. Malitnikov, again, with his favorite pattern, curling into the middle of the zone. And they blitzed that time. Andy Russell blitzed. The blitz was picked up very well by Oakland's offensive line. I think he was out of You'll see Malitnikov come down on Blunt, man for man, cuts back into the inside. Awfully hard to cover one-on-one. -on -one. Stabler going to work now with his specialty. His dart throwing, Sis drunk looking on, says, come on, boys, move it. 18 passes for Stabler, he's completed nine. First down, Oakland, they have to do it in the air. They can't move on the ground against the Steelers. Davis is in replacing Charlie Smith in the backfield. A play action fake. They're going deep to Burns. Touchdown! Look at him, he takes off. He's been working on block three straight times. This time he gets it. Slaper threw that ball. Let's take a look at this one. I want you to see, I think it is Holmes, number 63, that hits Slaver just as he throws. Watch this. Well, he's dynamite. And when he comes out of the huddle, you start worrying about him. Five times this year, he and Slaver connected for over 60 yards. That was a 38-yarder. Bland has picked up the gun. Well, Oakland did it their way. They finally had to go their way in the air. Timeout with a score. Oakland 10, Pittsburgh 3. In freezing cold, that's murder. But that's what we did with these cars. Let's see if any of them can start. One can. The one with the Sears Die Hard. The Die Hard. Extra power to start your car when most batteries won't. Sold only at sea. What's All-Star Outfielder Lou Brock looking for in the Yellow Pages? Results. That's why we advertise our business here. Under Flores. 90% of our orders come by phone. To find us, people have to use the Yellow Pages. And without it, we wouldn't be doing the business we're doing. And as long as business keeps looming, we'll keep advertising in the Yellow Pages. 
Advertise in the yellow pages where everybody's fingers do the walking. It's a snap. Only one man scored more touchdowns than this fellow this year. Chuck Foreman of the Vikings at 15. Chuck will be in the Super Bowl game. As the Vikings beat the Rams today, 14 to 10. Here we go now. Oakland's grabbed the lead 10 to 3. Coming to Steve Davis on the 7. He's out to the 20. 25 30. Finds a hole and spins his way upfield to the 40 yard line. Good hard running. Now they're going to spot him back on the 39 where his knee went down. Right after the Rose Bowl game on New Year's Night from the Orange Bowl in Miami. Fighting Irish in Notre Dame. Aaron Prestigian's last game as Notre Dame coach against Claire Bryant's Alabama Club. On NBC Sports, number one in live coverage of major sports events all year round. Now the big crowd, 54,000 yelling defense. Steelers on their 39, first down. Stick right for the run as Franco Harris bursts through and gets... Six yards to his 45. I'll tell you, they can talk about all the rule changes, and the one that remains the big one is that change in the kickoff, keeping those teams in good field position. That last drive of Oakland was 80 yards in eight plays, capped off by the Staber to Branch connection, and they've connected plenty this year. 15 touchdown passes, Staber hit Branch with this year. One against Miami last week, 71 yards, 38 yarder today. The third team in the regular season. Second down, four. Flyer. Flyer has a first down and more. He's in open territory. Keeps going. I'm telling you, Flyer. Rocky Flyer. This is reminiscent again of the way Miami came back last week. Now, this man does it on determination. Mullins leading the play. A versatile guard, tight end. Good balance by Blyer there. That's terrific. That's Tatum taking a shot at him around the neck. Coming around with Villapiano coming along. Tatum comes back, gets another shot. He and Villapiano get him down. Good run by Rocky. He finally became a starter. He has 79 yards in the game, Rocky Blyer. Franco Harris ran into his own blocker that time, number 50. Jim Clack who slowed him down. Right now, let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Well done by Bubba Smith. Kurt Gowdy, LD Regattas, Don Meredith. Hope you're enjoying this American Football Conference Championship game. There are three minutes to go in the third period. Oakland's ahead 10 to 3. Pittsburgh's on the march. They've come from their own 39 to the Oakland 30. Flyer again, and he may have the first down as he sprints to the 21-yard line, and they're opening the holes inside. I think if there was one player that was suspect in the Pittsburgh offense, it would be Blyer, but he has really done it today. Watch this, a little quick trap again up in the middle. They're trying to trap up to the outside, but that one was actually broken more up the middle. Now, if he's consistent, he's been going inside so very well, we might look for that quick pitch to the outside. Flyer is the leading ground gainer with 88 yards. Franco Harris has 81. Hope it is almost nil on the ground. It's the ground game of Pittsburgh against the air game of Oakland. There goes Flyer. He's tripped up at the 18-yard line. Number 80, the man that tripped him up. That's the right tackle, Art Toms, of the Oakland Raiders. He gained three at second and seven for the Steelers. Seven quarters, Kurt, as yet the Steelers have not scored this year on the Oakland Raiders other than the three-pointer. Well, they were inside the 10 three times today. They got a field goal. Now they're deep again. We're under two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Harris is hit. Great charge that time by Bubba Smith. Oh, uh, yeah, Bubba, Bubba that Smith. Bubba Smith the ears and bowed in there that time. Bubba Smith, we know his mother's here because we flew up from Los Angeles with her yesterday. She was talking about all the boys, but she's proud of Bubba right now. Yeah, I imagine Cody's home watching that one, too. Cody had a good year down in Houston. Cody's getting married this coming Saturday. We met Tate also yesterday. Congratulations. Here comes Big Bubba. Bubba's out. Jimmy Warren is in as a fifth back. Third down. Ten to go for the Steelers. On the Oakland 21. 
Bradshaw pass uh, wide but, open at yeah. the eight yard line. It's number 82, the rookie John Stallworth. He's hit by Atkinson. It'll be first down and goal to go for Pittsburgh. Again on the nine yard line. Isn't it incredible? Yeah, How really many is. times are you going to bring it down there? Bubba goes back in. But the tough thing is from around the eight or nine is, of course, the throw, the pass, you've got a limited field to work from. The defense gets in a little bit tighter. They usually play the run a little bit tougher down there, so it just makes it that much more difficult to score. First and eight to go for a Pittsburgh touchdown. 25 seconds remaining in the quarter. Harris, he might have had a half yard or a yard. They were piled up underneath. Sistrunk got in there to slow him down. Number 55, Connors, had uh, separated himself in under the play. Give him a yard at second down and seven to go for a Steeler touchdown. I would think that a rollout type of play with Bradshaw having the option to run or pass would be one of the most effective plays that they could call out here in this situation because we've mentioned earlier he is a good runner, but give himself that option to get to the outside. There's a gun at the end of the third quarter with the score of the Oakland Coliseum. Oakland 10, Pittsburgh 3. Ever wonder what happens to the money you keep in your checking and savings accounts? Let me show you. Some of it's here in town, put to work helping people change things for the better, like buying a new car or starting a new business. Your money's working, yet all the while, it's there when you need it in a safe, convenient place. America's bankers, helping you change things for the better. We've been working for years to bring you longer and still longer lasting power for cameras, radios, cassette players. Today, this is our best ever ready all-purpose power source. It far outlasts any ordinary battery when the going gets tough. Today, the ever ready sun, our longest lasting power source, the ever ready alkaline power cell. Come to the top. If you're going to win the big ball games, you need teamwork. Now, our country's energy crisis is no game. But if we all work together, it will work out better for all of us. So let's keep our thermostats at 68 degrees or lower. Let's drive under 50 miles an hour and save electricity where possible. If we all help, we'll really be helping ourselves. Please, don't be foolish. Preceding announcement by the National Football League. There's the old fingernail fighter, the managing general partner of the Raiders, Al Davis. And it's pretty he bit them all off last Carol. week. You name, name that one and you can have it. I don't know what that one was. Lucky he has any fingers left after yeah. the Miami game. What is that, would you say? I wish something. Take a guess. We, uh... I, think it's a <laughs> I think it's a cheerleader. Okay. That's a good guess. Listen to these statistics. Pittsburgh on the ground, 184 yards. Oakland, 26. Passing Oakland, 136. Pittsburgh, 64. Second down. Seven to go for a Pittsburgh touchdown. They can tie it up and they kick a point. Look at that. And look at that. A touchdown. Frank O'Hara scores up the middle. And the Steelers are right back in with that powerful ground game of theirs today. Boy, and has it been powerful, Kurt. That offensive line again, blowing off the ball, led by Ray Mansfield. Great call by Terry. Excellent acceleration by the man from Penn State. What a man. Well, the uh, Steelers came back just the way the Dolphins did. They took that ball on their 39-yard line and marked 61 yards for a touchdown. Now Roy Zarella. The Bobby Wall and holding. And his kick is good. We've got a tie game. 10 to 10. Looks like one of those games. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember, the tie will go into extra periods. Big touchdown for Terry Bradshaw. He's been bringing this team down, bringing them down. They finally got it in. First time they scored this year, but I there was a big one. Yeah, I didn't really think they'd do it that way either, right up the middle. I thought they'd just stop it up. But they've been making some good yards. But that guy right there, he's played a Super Bowl game, and so is Rocky Blyer. That's been a real big thing for uh, Pittsburgh today. They've gotten good running out of both of their running backs. Let's see, Don. Uh, Franco has 86 yards. 
And Flyer has 92. That's pretty That's good balance. All the way. Pretty good balance. All the Steelers moved nine plays, 61 yards. They took five minutes doing it. They tied it up. Azarilla will kick off with Roy Hart, Ron Smith deep, Errol Hart. Touchdown came in the first three seconds. Bumbled around by Banasek, picked up by Hart. And he doesn't get out very far. He's tackled by Donnie Shell. January 12th, NBC Super Sunday will begin at 1.30 Eastern time with a review of the past season. At 2.30, a pregame show with Don Meredith, Joe Namath, Jeannie Morris, and Jack Perkins. And Super Bowl IX immediately following at 3 o'clock Eastern time. The Minnesota Vikings against the winner of this game from the Tulane Stadium in New Orleans. After the game, we'll have interviews and highlights. All on NBC Sports. Ken Stabler, 10 out of 19. The Hubbard, and they're still going nowhere on the ground. Oh, that's the problem. That was Mike Wagger, a safety man that came up, along with Elsie Greenwood to help. The uh, Raiders, who were the number two rushing team in the American Conference this year, just six yards a game average behind Pittsburgh, have been stopped as almost as cold as you can stop a team on the ground. Only 30 yards rushing they've made. They have a second down and 13. Good draw. No. Nope. And a little quick hole open, but that was it. Davis is quickly plugged by Holmes and then Jack Ham, the linebacker. Good quickness in there. That's you know that looked like a really good hole to pick up seven or eight yards that time, and they that Ham came in there. They're all really good and quick. Well, you know. He doesn't get intercepted very often, Kenny Stabler. But if ever there's a situation where the interception percentage has increased dramatically, it's now. A hard rush will be coming, and that secondary can really move to the ball. They put Branch, Belitnikov over on the left side in a slot. On third and 12, Stabler's rush. He throws to the sideline, and a flag down. That was Andy Russell covering on the play. Andy Russell covering... Branch flag was dropped in the Pittsburgh secondary. Maybe a holding. I think it's going to be against Pittsburgh. The legal use of the hand. That's an automatic first down. That'll put the ball on the open 30 yard line with a first down. Pittsburgh's second penalty. Charlie Smith is in the third. there, Kirk. Number 23, and we know what he can do well. He can come out of that backfield and catch him. Sure can. Raiders ball, first down. The game is tied 10 to 10. Early in the fourth quarter. Play action pass. There it is deep. It's well covered by Blood. Can't get it. Branch was covered by Blood, and over there helping was the safety man Edwards as they double teamed him that time. That's the third time he's tried that same pattern. A lot of times they'll come right back and do it again. You see, they're going to be bring Branch out of there. Well, they're going to put a guy in there that's not that much slower than Branch. He wants to just run a 60-yard dash. So if, if your head's in that direction, it's not a bad time to come back and do it again. Oakland's in trouble. They are in trouble right now. Trouble Second on down. every corner. And the goal. Doesn't seem like Christmas, does it? Raiders on their own 30. They blow right at him. Look out! There it oh, is! Oh, yeah! Intercepted by Ham. Ham's at the 10 and down to the 9. That Ham is something else. Can he move? And Maybe he can move. They had well, a big rush on him, and Stabler had to unload it. I, that's, that really is almost the key every time. Everybody, all these quarterbacks can throw the ball well, went under the right conditions. When you move a guy around a little bit, he throws his timing off. Now, here you see Green coming up 75. He's watching. Moving to the outside. Kenny is a little bit, he threw that one a little bit off balance, trying to throw out the Smith. And that ham came out of nowhere. He, he always is. comes out of nowhere. That's his second interception. Seven, Seven on the season for him now. Pittsburgh's had three turnovers. That's open first. Second. First and goal to go. Bradshaw will put it up. Too high. And this one oh, is a flag, a flag in the end zone. 
flag dropped in the end zone. It's going to be holding against Oakland, I believe. Bubba laid a pretty good one on Terry that time, too. He was trying a little play action, sort of pass to hold those linebackers a little bit, get Flyer out of the backfield, just get one step on him. They're working on Bill Piano over there. It is a holding field, is it? Yep, looks like Got it. up a first down someplace in there. Got a flag in the end zone. Bubba had a good pass rush, though. If we could get a shot of our Tom, because the way they've been driving up in there and the way that offensive line of the Steelers has been blown off the ball, they might look for the big train, number 32, to come in. Here's Tom's. First and four to go for a Pittsburgh touchdown. The Steelers were trailing 10 to 3. They tied it in the first three seconds of the fourth quarter on a seven-yard run by Franco Harris to culminate a 61-yard Pittsburgh drive. They have... Moved off the line of scrimmage today, dominating the line of scrimmage. Their running game has been phenomenal. And the Steeler defense has stopped the Raiders' running game cold. First and goal on the four-yard line. Four linebackers are in here now. Monty Johnson has joined the other three. Rocky Blyer stopped at the three-yard line. Second down, three to go for a Pittsburgh touchdown. They have two tight ends in the game. Mullins has moved out to tight end. Mike Webster has gone to guard. I tell you also, when you've got a Stallworth in there, we haven't seen this man come near where one day we'll see him as a as a wide receiver. He's big, rangy, very strong, and as we saw earlier, great hands. Good time for a rollout, though. Got to have a rollout down here, haven't you? Sometimes. And, <clears throat> and Stallworth set to the right. Second down, three to go for a Pittsburgh touchdown. Harris, he's hit at the six. Oh. And right in there on him. Great charge by Gerald Irons, the outside linebacker, number 86. They had that one red, but I'll tell you, that was everybody came in. You see, it's just an off-tackle handoff. Tom, you were talking about a while ago. Al does get in there and trip him up first. But just take your pick. The rest of them are coming. Now it's third and six for a Steeler touchdown. 12 minutes. And nine seconds left to play. Jarrell is getting ready in case this game is tied 10 to 10. The Steelers have reached their peak in the last month of the season, playing their best football when they had to. Bradshaw throws the slant right for in. a touchdown. Got him, right in there. There it is to Lynn Swan on a slant, and the rookie, who has been phenomenal the last three games, puts the Steelers out in front. Bradshaw to Lynn Swan. And Bradshaw hung in there good, too. Let's take a look at it. This is a short set we mentioned earlier. He set strong again. Good protection. He looked at Swan all the way. That's where he was going through it. Right by Connors. And right into Swan's arms. Nice throw. Nice catch. Six points. Let's take another look at it. John McKay is so proud of Lynn Swan. And who wouldn't be? So is Mrs. Swan. His mother, I'm talking about. Roy Zarello will fly the point. And the kick by Zarella is good. And the Steelers trailing 10-3 have scored two quickies. And the score now is Pittsburgh 17 and Oakland 10. Now comes Miller time. He blew out that 100-foot candle and saved thousands of barrels of crude. Now it's time for the best tasting beer you can find. Miller High Life, America's quality beer since 1855. If you've got the time, if you've got the time, we've got the beer. Man, this is a great New York Life team. We play to win for our policy owners. Today we've got another opportunity. George here's got a wife, two kids, and a mother. He needs life insurance protection badly, and we've got to get it for him. We're going to block out money problems, protect them against financial disaster. Okay, let's go! Take the worry off his shoulders! Protect his family! You've made it, George! Financial security! Where the name of the game is life, there's New York life. Mary Shelley's classic novel comes to life in Frankenstein, the true story. Monday night at 9, 8 central time on NBC. There's the rookie, Lynn Swan, has been congratulated. 
He was a fine performer in the Rose Bowl last year. The Steelers' number one draft pick, who has come strong the last part of the year, as have the Steelers. Torello will kick. Hart and Smith are deep for the Raiders. And he gets a boomer off. Smith takes it a two yards deep. He's going to run it out. And he's hit and down with poor field position at the Oakland 15-yard line. Remember the NFL report with Jim Ryan and Al Michaels. Post-game interviews, highlights of today's game, time permitting. Pittsburgh leading 17 to 10, 11.42 to go. One thing that the Oakland Raiders know at this point, Donald, is what you like to do. They can't run the football and win this game. We'll gotta, probably see him go up top. Gotta put it up in the air. You know, that coverage of that kick, I think, is a real key thing you might think of. They got him back in the hole now. They don't get out of it. And here they go right back. Look at that. Again. Look at that. They just can't move him. Uh -oh. The Raiders have made 30 yards in the ground today. Averaged 168 yards a game during the season. And that magnificent Pittsburgh defense has really checked it. And Art Rooney is sitting up there. I'm sure he's looking at that clock. 40-some years of being in this. Yeah, what, a nice, awfully close. what a nice man he is, too. The leading ground gainer is Davis with 13 yards. Saber on the rollout. Throws, and it is complete for first down. The Cliff Branch just over the 30-yard line of Oakland. He's may have covered seen, over there by Blunt. May have seen something on that play that might indicate what uh, Kenny will do the rest of the game, and that's roll out and throw. He hasn't been getting the kind of protection that he's wanted and he's used to in the pocket. That time, it was a sprint out pass that he can throw that thing very well, especially to his left, being left in it passing. He doesn't roll out as well as he used to. He has five or six floating bone chips in his left knee. And that's one way he can escape the pass rush. Oh, look at that hitting. Look at that hitting there. That was Jack Ham, number 59. Clarence well, Davis carrying the ball. J.T. Thomas came up in the left a, corner. He sure made a super play. Let's take a look at this. Ham. You'll come to this side. Now, it looks like it's about to develop. The man releases right here. JT releases on Blitnikoff and closes to the inside. That's the way you play the corner. Blitnikoff, as was put in the paper, he says, I don't ever block. He said, occasionally I get in somebody's way. Yeah. He didn't block that time. He didn't get in his way either. Second down, six play. Whoa, oh, there he goes. There he goes. Go. They won't get him, maybe. They got him. Oh. Jack Lambert saved the touchdown. Left track. Oh, he's quite spot Lambert behind him, cutting across. Are we going to have another we're one of those? Speed, we're, that branch yeah, we're going to have another one of those like last Saturday. This Cliff France, we keep saying it, but man, he's an asset to have on your ball club because of his speed, and he's you know he's getting where he runs some good routes. Good tackle here, open field tackle on Cliff France. Yeah. <laughs> that's, gee, that's pretty good. What a save by the rookie Jack Lambert. 42-yard play again. Stabler and Branch teaming up. Branch now. Take a look at six it passes are coming up to the line of scrimmage here. Nothing really that fancy except he's got Blunt turned around a little bit. Blunt was trying to go for the interception, it looked like. The look at wide that. open. It's all down. Branch gets up. He's top seven now. And that's another first down. Good Branch. Seven receptions. And now Oakland's going. He's uh, come back for it. You're right. You know, that just, again, because he's got the speed, they're not going to play him that close. Oakland ball, first down on the Pittsburgh 12-yard line. And that Staver goes to work behind. He's something. Yeah, he is really good in this situation. That's the kind of guy you got to have on your team, too. But you're going to get behind every now and then. This big crowd on its feet now. 17 to 10, Pittsburgh ahead, nine minutes to play. He's got him wide open they again. Got, oh, what a Lambert cracking down at the nine-yard line. Hitting Clarence Davis coming out of the backfield. You see Davis coming out. We've mentioned he is, I guess, the best pass receiver they've got in the backfield. It's not much of a route, a little curl to the outside, and by the time he gets it, Lambert is there. You know, last week we saw a catch by Fred Belitnikov going in the same direction that, to this day, it's hard to believe he was able to pull it in. He's got the wide side of the field. He's got J.T. Thomas. They're on the move. Second down. Six to go for Oakland on the Pittsburgh eight-yard line. Hubbard pulls his way maybe to the sixth. Just can't find many cracks there on the ground. 
tough yardage, but they can make a first down and not score. And that, I'm guessing, is what Kenny had in mind by calling uh, that all tackle play there. He hasn't been doing any good with his run all day. Saber now has passed for 220 yards in this game. He's hit 14 out of 22, most of it in the second half. He's remarkable when he's behind. Eight minutes to play, and Pittsburgh leading 17 to 10. Saber has 31 touchdown passes this year. Safety look out, look out, they got a big rush on him. He threw that one away. They had a blitz on him. Holmes was in there. And uh, L.C. Greenwood was coming. He had, uh, Dwight White was coming. He had not much of a chance that time. And now they're down to a big decision, fourth and four <laughs> on the Pittsburgh six. And George Bland is in to kick a field goal. We've Cut. seen that Steeler defense do the same thing that Oakland has done earlier. They stopped them inside. I love that defensive call. That was a gutsy call. Third down uh, situation there. They went for it. They sent that safety in from the outside, forced him again off of his rhythm, had to throw it away. 24-yard field goal attempt is up, and it is... Good by George Blanda, his second field goal of the game. So now the lead has been narrowed down, and the score is Pittsburgh 17, Oakland 13. Let me tell you, survival in this tailoring business comes from knowing who you're sewing against, like Farrah. How about that? Jackets now. As if I didn't have enough trouble just competing with Farrah slacks. Boy, are they giving me fits. Of course, Farrah is giving everybody else fits, too. Now, you see how those fit some fine piece of goods. Farrah slacks and jackets with Encron polyester. Everything about them looks tailor-made. Now, how are you going to beat that? This rock will actually burn. It's oil shale, a new source of oil for our country. Amico bid $105 million for a half interest in that oil shale on 5,000 acres of this land in western Colorado. And it could cost us up to $2 billion total investment just for the facilities to develop this lease. Oil shale, a new source of oil no foreign power can ever turn off. That was a 79-yard drive that stopped on the six-yard line, all passing by Stapler, mostly to Cliff Branch. And now Jackowenko will kick off. It's a swiveler. It's Taken there by Pearson on the 25, out to the 40. He's still going. What field position here? Yeah, that's <laughs> and Pittsburgh's in Oakland territory. Don't forget Saturday, January 11th, from Mobile, Alabama, the college bowl most highly regarded by the Pro Scouts. This year features two of the nation's top quarterbacks, Steve Barkowski from California and David Hum from the University of Nebraska. The Senior Bowl on NBC, Saturday, January 11th. Now a big question will be, can Pittsburgh run off two or three first downs and use four or five minutes? They've been doing that all afternoon on the ground. It could be disastrous to Oakland. Rocky Blyer, and he stopped at the 47-yard line of Oakland. I think Bubba's played better than anybody on that defensive unit today. You're right. He's he, had a well of a game. They keep uh, bringing him in and out. They and flying and every now and then to bring Bubba out. But today, he's played really well. You know, it's interesting. Terry hasn't run quite as much, but he's called an excellent football game. He may try to negotiate the side that Gerald Irons is playing on, number 86. We might watch it. Rocky Blyer now has 96 yards rushing. He's out gained Frank O'Hara. Both are just short of the 100 mark. Here's Bradshaw. Bubble! Bubble! And the dive. Look at that. Oh. I can't believe that. That is unreal. Uh, Oakland, what got a chance back. Oakland had there and let it get away. Caroline. That's the hardest thing there is to recover a fumble. Looks easy, but Rock. five or six, look at that. Oh, right. he, How could we not recover that fumble? Madden says I could have gone out there and gotten it. I'll tell you, Gerald Irons did a super job on it, though. Gerald was the only man between him and a long run. Number 86. Now, he's going to play him. Really defeats it. He carried that ball and hit it on his uh, hit on his thigh pad. Look at this. Watch if he can Irons is just knocking him away. Here we go at it again. Looks right like Oakland it. had it. Is that Tatum in there? Look at this. That's Rocky unreal. Blyer finally. Rocky Blyer. Rocky, you're having quite a day, my man. Third and eight for Pittsburgh. 
may see him get his first hundred of the day. They're on the 46 yard line of Oakland. Bradshaw passed, and he's got Lynn Swan out there with a great grab for a first down. What a big one. Oh, and what now Bradshaw one. nailed him again, and Swan made the catch, the rookie. You might think, too, you know, that Terry's come back. He could be a little bit rattled. He, uh, he's just fumbled. He comes back third down and long, sends Swan down on a turn-in route and drills it right in there. Bradshaw's made some great third down tosses when he's had to today. Gone mostly with his ground game, but when he's had to throw, he's been there. Sure has. 17-13 Pittsburgh, five and a half minutes to play. There he is, eight out of 15. That'll take the time. Franco Harris to the 33-yard line of Oakland. The thing that flashed through my mind when I saw Bradshaw fumble that ball was the game that these two teams played a couple of years ago. With the, I guess uh, Franco Harris play that has never been duplicated. I've never seen anything like it in my life. And I, you thought, you know, they Oakland looked like they had it wrapped up and right there at the minute. That one happened, and I thought this time that they were going to pick it up and run it back for a touchdown. Those two backs, Flyer has 96, Franco Harris has 88. Not too unlike last week, and if you think about Zonka, Second down eight, Pittsburgh leading 17-13. And they rush it to the 30-yard line of Oakland. Franco Harris carrying. He's over the 90-yard uh, mark now. When you think about Curry, I was going to say Zonka and Benny Malone, they both were up there last week also, and Oakland still beats them. Now again, the effectiveness of this offense has really been the diversity of the offense, the way he's run inside, outside, trap, and the pitch, that quick toss has been so very effective. Third down and five. The crowd yelling. They've got to get the ball here. Got to stop them. Too much time. Long signal yeah. count by Bradshaw. Four minutes to go. Pittsburgh ahead by four points. Niles take off. Now he throws deep in the end zone to Stallworth over his head. And he hits the trombone. Fourth and five. Clock stop with 3.50 to play. That would have made a great picture, right into the trombone. Right into the old trombone, but again, a pretty smart move. You think about it, they had him, his men were covered, he rolled out the outside, and he's got one of the nice catch there, old trombone. Yes, Del Courtney's band. 17 to 13, the Steelers ahead, 3.50 to play. Bobby Wall is gonna be in a punt formation. And the... Uh, they handle this ball, all right. We'll see if Stabler can pull off another miracle. Kicks it for the near corner. And it, hey, hey, it is down. I think that that guy rolled in, he's going to go back to the 20. Let's see where they put it. It's a touchback. It'll come out to the 20. And we have a timeout right now here in Oakland to score. Pittsburgh 17, Oakland 13. Of the new personal mid-size cars, one is getting a lot of recognition. Hey, Charger! Yesterday's Dodge Charger got recognition for winning 75 racing titles. Hey, Charger! Today's Charger is a mid-sized car with a style that keeps it ahead of the crowd. And it's getting recognition. Hey, Charger! Maybe too much recognition? Hey, Charger! The Congress of the United States has passed and the President has signed legislation raising the coverage of the Federal Savings and Loan Insurance Corporation. Effective immediately, your savings are now insured up to $40,000 by this U.S. government agency. When you see this new emblem at your savings and loan, remember it still means no one has ever lost a penny in an insured savings account. Look at that rushing yardage. Pretty well tells the story. Now let's see what the Raiders do. They're on their 20 yard line. They're behind 17 13 with 3 minutes and 40 seconds to go. To the sideline they go, it's skipping out of bounds. There's the tight end, Bob Moore. And that stops the clock. 
This is the master, split second stabler, working the sidelines and against the clock. You look at that secondary, you know Jimmy Allen's got to be worried. Mel Blunt out of the football game, Allen's in. Mike Wagner is covering him deep. So they're going to give him a great deal of help in that deep secondary. They have a second down and three from their 27. Got Branch over there this time, but watch Andy Russell go out there. In a, he's got fumble, a fumble, fumble on the exchange. They slept that one up. Now they're into a third and three. They've got to get a first down here and keep the ball. Jack Ham was right in there. Chuck Knoll nervously pacing the Steelers. Of course, hadn't won a championship of any kind until two years ago. They've never been to the Super Bowl, and right now they have an excellent chance that they could stop Oakland. They were flying back from San Diego when they won that championship, and Andy Russell goes up to give the ball to Mr. Rooney, and in typical Mr. Rooney fashion, he says, thank you, I appreciate this very much. They're coming at him, and it is incomplete, and there's a uh, Lambert on a linebacking blitz came at him and hit him as he let it go. This Lambert played a phenomenal game for a rookie today. Boy, he sure has, and they're letting it all fly. They've come with the safety blitz. You see Joe Green pull him? That is that the play. That was it. That was it. They got lost back there. You see Beeler's trying to come back and pick it up, but Joe really is responsible for it. You're right, Al. He takes it with him and lets uh, Lambert come back in to the middle linebacker. They don't blitz that often, but they are really calling a good defensive game, too, I think. Ray Guy in a punt formation. 2.55 to go. 17-13 Pittsburgh. Minnesota standing by, seeing who they're going to play. A low driving kick to Swan. Takes it on his 28, 30, 40. Lynn Swan melted down on his 48-yard line where the Steelers have the ball with the first down. And trying to protect the four-point lead. The Rose Bowl game. Wednesday afternoon, beginning at 4.30 Eastern time, Ohio State, USC. Will then be followed by the Orange Bowl game, Notre Dame, Alabama. Back to back on NBC, New Year's Day. Hope you'll be with us. Well, the Steelers are two minutes and 45 seconds away from going to the Super Bowl. Bradshaw dropped the ball a little while ago trying to carry it one-handed and nearly had a fluke play that Oakland gobbled it up. They might have gone for a touchdown. That's Franco Harris. He stopped in the 49-yard line, a yard gain. Second down, nine. On the tackle with Gerald Irons. And now time running out in Oakland. Steelers taking their time. Most important defensive opportunity, that is, of the day for this Oakland team. There is no question, Kurt. They've got to stop them to stay in this football game. The Raiders were six-point favorites. But the Raiders were worried that their team might have emotionally spent themselves trying to beat the Dolphins. So much the Steelers have been cresting week by week, peaking, getting better and better. Down goes Blyer. And that's Bubba again. Bubba again hit him. That's right, on the 49-yard line. Smith played his best game in two years today. The two-minute warning has been given. The clock stops with a score. Pittsburgh 17 and Oakland 13. New tires must meet U.S. government safety standards. These tires are doing just that. Only these tires aren't exactly new. They're the same set of Sears steel-belted radials that ran the back roads of Morocco. And after Morocco, this same set of tires ran American roads. Ran a total of 72,400 miles. After all that punishment and all those miles, the tires still look remarkably good. To prove how good they really are, we're testing them against the safety standards new tires must meet. And these Sears steel-belted radials not only meet those standards, they exceed everyone. That's something to think about the next time you buy a new set of tires. Radial design, two steel belts. The Sears steel-belted radial, only at Sears. One of the heroes today has been a rookie. The only rookie starting in either the offensive or defensive lineup for the Steelers has been Jack Lambert. He saved the touchdown with a tackle on Cliff Branch. He just made an important blitz tackle on Stabler. He's been all over the field. The rookie has led the club in tackles all year. And he has been something today. Third down and eight for the Steelers. 
Third and eight. They are going to throw. I didn't think yeah, they would. That's right. They're going deep, deep, deep. And it is broken up at the 10 yard line. And claiming interference is Lynn Swan. He was being covered downfield by Skip Thomas. Frank well, Harris comes over. Always easy to second guess. I expect them to run. I figure they could run out at least 30, 35 seconds, or Oakland would have to use one of their timeouts. Pretty good athletes have worn that 32. Jimmy Brown, Alston Howard won the most valuable player award with the Yankees in baseball. Sandy Koufax. Now he gets away and he's hit. That's, there's a flag down in the secondary on J.T. Thomas. A flag oh, on that J.T. One. Thomas. Well, that's one they could be talking about for a long time. That was thrown rather late, and Thomas doesn't like it. Stapler seems to be hurt. I don't think. I think it's on Thomas. Stapler got up slow, Kurt. Well, that big iron line was really barreling. That was such a big penalty there because the defensive line just overwhelmed Kenny. That's holding. And an automatic first down, the Raiders ball on their 32-yard line. Interesting that penalty was called after Slaver had been tackled, so the penalty was from where the ball was right. down. They lost yardage, but they got a first down. Charlie Smith's in now. Try and run a pass pattern. 17-13 Pittsburgh. Here's a deep pass. Intercepted. Be intercepted by Thomas. That could be the game. Line. Thomas is back to the 40. Up party Trying to stay over. in bounds as he cuts to the middle of the field. And he's down to the 24. Steelers oh, put that boy. one up for grabs. That's what you call. One minute to go, and the Steelers should have it now. Super Bowl. 38-yard return by Thomas. And they won it the way Kurt you might have thought. This Steeler defensive team has kept them in. When the Steelers were having their trouble early in the year, this defense was there. That secondary with all the interceptions, the 52 sacks, the recoveries of fumbles. Bradshaw finally did come on, and but it was the, the defense. Well, they led the NFL in takeaways all year, recovering fumbles, getting to the quarterback. It's one of the great defensive teams you'll ever want to look at. Line told the story today the way they block. Look at That's this. Rocky Blyer. Blyer, an unsung hero coming into the late stretch. Going now emerged as a Pittsburgh star. Timeout by Oakland. They have two more timeouts. Let's check the Rocky Blyer's yardage now. He's getting close to 100. Got to be over with that run. That's Rocky Blyer, the Vietnam veteran. Assuming our infallible. Six years, and he finally started against Kansas City this year. 99 yards for him. 99, 99. yards. Joe Costanza strikes again. You know, Joe Green has a had a quote that I was quite interested in. He people ask him, what, you know, what do you think about the Super Bowl, Joe? He says, you know, I really don't know. Most everything I've worked for in my life has been some sort of a disappointment after I got there. He said the anticipation of getting there was always greater. He said, but I sure would like a chance to go to that Super Bowl and answer that question later. It looks like old Joe's going to have a shot at it. 
52 seconds away. Tough luck, Kenny. You've been super all year, man. Well, let's see. Ground game of Pittsburgh that grounded out today. They dominated the line of scrimmage. There's a rushing figure. That tells it all. Look at it. What an edge. Minnesota will play Pittsburgh unless the Steelers pull a freak play here and lose it over. Joe Costanza has been our statistician on this championship game. And I'd like to thank my spotter, Walter Cunningham. There goes Franco Harris. He's going to score. He again. scores. It is all over. And that Pittsburgh goes in the Super Bowl. The Steelers and the Vikings will play in the Super Bowl game. NBC will carry the game. Franco Harris, the second touchdown, and I believe he's over 100 yards. Let's take a look at this. Franco Harris has been sensational in the stretch, despite the fact that he missed three games, over 1,000 yards. What a run. Let's see Franco by himself. Yeah, huh? Franco is just doing his thing right up the middle. You have to say that there's probably a little let down in that. Oakland second uh, defensive unit at this time because they had very little shot at it, but that's a nice way for Franco to end up his regular season play. Well, he scored two touchdowns today and three against Buffalo. Five touchdowns that's in two playoff not games. Not bad. That's not bad. I think you've got to give a lot of credit to Bradshaw. He's been criticized an awful lot since he's been up there. He was. They're expecting big things from him. Are we going to go to a station break here? No, I want to tell you something, All John. Right. When I went down to do the. Pittsburgh Oakland game. I never saw a fellow down as Terry was. He said, I've always been number one. I'm sitting on the bench. I don't know what my future is. He was really depressed. I remember talking to him. I said, you know, just keep your mouth shut and things will work out for you. And it did. And he fought his way back. He's played probably his three best games of his career, the last three games for the yeah, season. And you can look at him right there. There's old Joe and Terry. One other thing, you know, Mr. Rooney said when they had a shot at Bradshaw, everybody wanted Bradshaw. And the Steelers were actually tied with the Bears. They won the first round draft choice on a flip of a coin. And they had a lot of people, a lot of the teams around the league were trying to get Bradshaw. They offered the Steelers a lot of different things for the right to draft Bradshaw. And Mr. Rooney Sr. says, nope, not going to do it. He says, look at the guys we've let go. We, we've had Unanis here. We've had uh, Lenny Dawson here. We had draft rights to send luck. Yeah, and he said, the, look the, at the, this. the key you know, this was... That's an interesting scene when you remember the strike yep. and the feeling. Yep. All for, look at this. That's true. All for that here. Got to be a great thrill. Got to be a great thrill. <laughs> I wonder if he'll shave that beer. I bet he doesn't. I don't wouldn't if I was him. The Oakland Raiders receiving the kickoff. Coming out with a ball was hard. The Raiders had the best record. They lost their opening game one point to Buffalo. Lost only one game the rest of the year, beat Miami in a thriller, and now today have been defeated here on her home ground, George Blanda. 33 years in football. He was hoping to be in that Super Bowl game. <laughs> He's been in a lot of championships in his career, hasn't he? Played an awful lot of them. Yeah. Played in one I'll never forget down in Dallas. The second longest game ever played. That pass is incomplete to Marv Hubbard. 37 seconds to go now. 111 yards on the ground for Franco Harris, 99 for Flyer. Can you imagine the celebration that's going to go on in that Steeler town? But with the Steelers, the Pittsburgh Steelers are in the Super Bowl. How about that? Well, that was what my old buddy Frank Gifford said. He picked Pittsburgh to go down to the Super Bowl, so... Frank, Frank Gifford. Yeah, remember Frank Gifford, number 16 in your program? You know, the funny thing, the Steelers lost only three games all year. Act like they, you know, everybody thought they had a bad year. Oh, he got hit that time, too. They only lost three games. Stabler's cracked down. I said he had insured himself today, his attorneys, for over a half million dollars. He now has a court case going with uh, Birmingham, and he just wants to be sure either way that he remains valuable, mostly to himself. You know... I'm looking at Kenny, Curtis, you talk, and the defeat. It's almost impossible really down to describe the feeling that's really going on right now with those Oakland Raiders. Yeah, that's true, because, you know, they, they're not like teams that have come close a lot. Oakland, what, the winningest team in football for the last 10 years, right. has gone to one Super Bowl. I know we were with Al Davis and his wife last night, and how disappointed that guy right there, John Madden, who consistently does a good job of coaching. So, 
But it, you know, it is a tough thing. You, you get into a season, it's a long season. There's only two teams that can go to the Super Bowl. I've said it many times. I'll say it again. I think we've really got to appreciate all the team's efforts, whether you get to the Super Bowl or not. But that looks like the group we're going to have down in New Orleans, and I'm looking forward to being a few two guys down there. And Big Bubba has oh, 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 a bad knee, terrible knee operation, had one of his best days today in a losing cause. And now that's Davis that's injured. There are only 25 seconds to go. Pittsburgh ahead 24-13. These Raider defense against the run finished 21st in the National Football League this year, and it was vulnerable today against the Pittsburgh rushing game. Last Pittsburgh week, controlled the clock and the ball most of the afternoon. Last week, Kurt, we were talking about Zonka and Malone, and we were thinking about that running attack, and there was the feeling that you couldn't possibly lose if you were able to move that football. Well, Oakland did it. This team today pulled it back, huh? Yep, that was kind of neat, too. You see Cliff Branch and Joe Green shaking hands. There goes Mean Joe out. Yep. He's not and, a uh, mean. You know, that's, that's a great player, Franco. Up, man. Franco. And then congratulations. We were talking earlier. Those two guys right there, I think, if you got to pick two cats that have done it really in the last few years for the Steelers, it's those two guys right there. They believe in each other. And, uh, man, you're right. They're going to be happy, aren't they? <laughs> what a win for the Rooney family and Art Rooney, who's been through the most frustrating losing years as an owner, and he's finally seen it at the age of 74. His team will play in the Super Bowl. Now I will have a drum roll after that. 15 seconds remaining. Out it goes to the tight end, Bob Moore. All over now, Kenny Staver knows it. Raider fans, half of them have emptied this stadium when Franco Harris galloped over for that last touchdown. Another bitter end of the season for Oakland. So close. Last year they were beaten in the finals by Miami. This year they've been defeated in the finals by Pittsburgh. Just can't quite get over that hump. Yet with a team that continues to rack up winning seasons after winning seasons. Good throw, good catch. Yeah. I'm telling you, I admire that. I really admire that. Super throw. You come out and ball game's over, but man, he's whipping it in there. That kid right there is going back to Louisiana. The Louisiana Tech product is going to way down yonder in New Orleans. Come on, Al, we got to do it, man. Gosh, I, I, you're not giving me enough support. No, you're singing well, though. Now, would do that. There are four seconds remaining. You think Bradshaw was a loser there if you look at him. Well, he's posing right now for some pictures. That's your pensive look. Uh, I think he's doing something much more, much deeper than that. Plus Very experience. thankful man. Yeah, I think he is too. I remember the day he was hurt, hurt his collarbone, and they booed him at Pittsburgh. When he left the field, an injured player. That really hurt him. Look <laughs> That's that. a good one. Shanklin. That's a good one. His first year, the rookie year, after all so many big expectations, he hit 38%. Through 26 interceptions and four touchdowns, I think. Something like that. And the gun uh, sounds, it's all over. The Pittsburgh Steelers have defeated the Oakland Raiders 24-13 and go to the Super Bowl to meet the Minnesota Vikings, John Madden. And that's it. That's the lineup. Kurt Gowdy, Aldi Rogatis, Don Meredith. Thank you for looking in. Remember the Rose Bowl game now. will be on NBC starting at 4.30 Eastern time. We'll be down there doing that game January 1st. And then after that, the Orange Bowl game, both on NBC. Colombo goes after a fellow officer covering up a murder tonight on NBC.